Hi teachers, today's video is about what you should not do during your teacher observation. These are my four big teacher no-nos. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Melanie Howell and I have been a classroom teacher for more than 20 years. So my advice here is based on my experience. If you like this video, I hope you will subscribe and um, hit the little bell notification so that you won't miss out on future videos. All right, so what are the big no-nos for teacher observation? Number one, you can't get so nervous that your students can tell you're nervous or something's wrong. Because if you do that, you are going to create an opportunity for them to ask some awkward questions like, what's wrong? Why are you, what's different? What's happening? You know, because sure enough, they will ask if your nerves come through and show. So you gotta keep that under control. Everybody gets a little nervous, that's no big deal. It's actually probably good. It's good that you're a little nervous, but a little nervous. You gotta keep it under control. All right, that's the easy one. Number two, don't go to extremes during your observation. Don't go to the extreme of, I'm gonna stand in one place and lecture, or all the way over to, um, I'm gonna try a new game that I've never done with my kids and just sort of hope it all turns out. You, you know, you gotta, I hate to say it, but you gotta play it pretty safe on observation day. You need to stick with what you consider best teaching practices. If you're curious what I think are like the five most basic um, components of a good observation, I'll put a link up here. All right, so number one, you gotta keep your nerves under control. Number two, don't go to extremes and try brand new things or get so nervous that you stand in one place and you know forget forget that you're not supposed to lecture second graders for 25 minutes. All right, number three, this is the most important thing, I think. Don't sacrifice what you know is good for your kids in the name of your observation. So what do I mean by this? Well, actually, this one kind of bit me in the rear a few years ago. Um, I had a student who I already, you know, was establishing, it was the beginning of the year, we were establishing the report, and I already knew that he liked to play with little things in his lap and that his hands needed to be busy. But I also knew that he, if I called on him, he could still answer and he still knew what was going on. He was listening, he just didn't look like he was listening. So when he started, during my observation, when he started playing, I ignored it because that's what I usually do. However, the observer of my class thought I didn't know what was happening. So I kind of got called out on, well, you didn't even know, you know, in terms of behavior management, you didn't know this was happening. And so of course I could explain it and everything was fine with the observation. However, I learned that what I should have done was to maybe like close proximity so that the observer realized that I was aware but I was still doing what was best for the child by ignoring the behavior because that's what we had already established. Yeah, so that happened. Another example could be this. Let's say during your mini lesson um, you've got a few kids that it's obvious they're not quite with the the academic concept that you've been talking about and you're about to send everybody off to different areas of the room to work in small groups but you can tell that these two or three are are not ready for that they need reteaching so don't get so focused on your content that you sacrifice and just send those kids out to small groups that they're really not ready for because that's what's supposed to happen according to your lesson plan the administrator would rather see you be able to acknowledge what's happening in the room, monitor and adjust what you need to do. If those two or three need reteaching, then you send everybody to their groups and you work with that two or three for a minute, reteach, and then maybe they can move into groups or maybe by the end they'll form their own group. However it is you decide to do it. But your admin would rather see you monitor and adjust than just plow forward with what's written on your lesson plan. You should always do what's best for the kids, even if it comes back to bite you a little bit. Okay, um, my final 
big no-no for observation day is chit chat. Um, we're teachers, we're proud of what happens in our classrooms, and we want to know what the administrator thinks of their observation. Um, at my school, after an observation, you sign up for a conference and you meet with that administrator and you get the breakdown and you go through all the components. And that's great. You get lots of pats on the back and it feels wonderful. However, you need to remember that that administrator has a list a mile long of teachers that have to be observed by a certain date. And you are really hurting yourself by when they get ready to leave by stopping and chit chatting it up like well did you see what so and so did you know this is not lunch table conversation kind of chit chat time you need to wait until you have more time a more appropriate time to get a little feedback on your lesson because trust me they'll probably get in touch with you all right so what were the four big no-nos for teacher observation number one don't get so nervous that the children can tell you're nervous number two don't go to extremes. I'm so frozen, I don't move around all the way to, I'm playing this new game and just hoping it works out. Number three, never, never sacrifice what's best for the kids in the name of your observation. And the last one, number four, no chit chat with the administrator. Let that administrator come in and get out. All right, I hope these four tips are things you will find helpful. And again, if you like the video, I hope you subscribe and I will see you in future videos. Bye.